What's going on everyone? John from Hobbyist PCs here. Today I want to talk to you about a program that I would probably consider to be one of the most important programs that you should have for regular maintenance on your PC. Especially if you're a gamer, you should all be pretty familiar with this program in particular. What's this program that I'm talking about exactly? I'm talking about Display Driver Uninstaller, otherwise known as DDU. And today I'm going to explain what it is exactly that it does and how you can go about using it to properly uninstall your drivers on your system. Now for those of you who are already aware of the program's purpose and are just here for a walkthrough on how to go through the process, there is a timestamp in the description down below and it'll skip ahead straight to the walkthrough for you. For those of you just hearing about this for the first time and you wanna learn more, hang around and I'll give you the rundown. So sometimes you're gonna end up running into problems with your display driver. You might experience a number of different issues in your games or programs, things like poor frame rates, stuttering, or crashing in blue screens. Out of all these though, I probably have to say that crashing in blue screens is probably one of the biggest indications of a graphics driver problem. Most of the time, a good fix is to simply uninstall the driver and reinstall it clean. However, simply uninstalling the driver the traditional way doesn't guarantee that the fix is going to work. This largely has to do with how much the traditional uninstaller actually removes from your system. They usually don't remove everything having to do with that driver and some of the times, that issue is related to something going on within those files that weren't removed. This is where Display Driver Uninstaller comes in. Display Driver Uninstaller is a free program that you can use to properly uninstall every file associated with your graphics driver properly from your system. Display Driver Uninstaller is a free program that you can use to remove your graphics driver along with all the associated programs and files that have to do with that driver in particular, and they remove it completely from your system. By no means is it a difficult program to use, but it still might require a walkthrough for people who are doing it for the first time. So today, I'm gonna walk you through the process. Let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so as far as how I'm gonna go through this walkthrough, um, I'm gonna show you guys how you can go about getting Display Driver Uninstaller. I'm also gonna show you where you can get your NVIDIA drivers, and I'm also gonna show you how the whole process works. I'm gonna actually go through this myself. At one point, I'm going to need to point the camera at my monitor as I can't use OBS to record in safe mode, as we're gonna to need to use safe mode in order to actually perform this properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. From your web browser, whatever you choose to do, you can actually go to Google and you can just type DDU in the search bar and you will start to get results for Display Driver Uninstaller in the search results. There are a couple places you can get it. You can get it from the official website at Wagner or you can go ahead and get it from Guru 3D. Both are simply the same download. Just so you know, to kind of ease your fears, if you're getting it from Guru 3D, I had a friend comment that it looked a little sketchy getting it from this random website, but just so you know, it's a very accepted program in the PC community. So this is not like some sketchy piece of, you know, spyware or anything like that. This is a very accepted tool that is used by many people in the PC community. So this is a legit thing. Now from here, you can just simply look for the actual download link. You can see it shows you the program and everything there are many download locations you can get one that's closer to your area since i am from the east coast in the u.s i'm going to click that of course it says the download will start in five seconds if it doesn't then i'm pretty sure that there's somewhere you can click and it starts downloading from there it starts with a zip file once the file is done downloading, you can go ahead and you can check it out and it'll bring you to the zip file. You'll open the zip file and then there'll be an exe inside of it, which is actually a zip extractor. So you're going to have to extract the actual program from it. Uh, you'll just simply click that and you'll extract the program. I already have it extracted onto my PC, so I'm not going to bother extracting it myself, but it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, you just simply find a location to put DDU and then the program will be there to use. But why don't we go ahead and grab our display driver. Now I'm using an NVIDIA card. If you're using AMD, you might have to go go to AMD's website and do this, but normally from NVIDIA, I'll just go to the website and I'll grab the latest driver. I'm using GeForce. I have a 10 series card, therefore I'm going to want to select that. And I've got a 1080 Ti, so I'm pretty much good to go. You can pick from this list right here, whatever your card is. They all use the same drivers, so you probably could realistically just pick any one of those and it'll, it'll give you the latest driver. Now, I checked to make sure that I have the latest version. I do have the latest version, so if you want to release, the, if you want to download the latest version, you can just click that one and it'll download. I already have it on my system, so I'm okay with that. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to head over to where DDU is installed. I installed it into this file over here, and here's Display Driver Uninstaller. You just go ahead and click that. So you can't even use the program unless you reboot into safe mode, which is great 
because that's how you're supposed to properly use it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to put the computer in a safe mode and how that works. Uh, but there's one other step that you should take before you actually run DDU. And what we're going to have to do is tell Windows not to look for drivers through Windows updates, because whenever you have a missing driver, it's going to automatically go to Windows updates and search for the driver itself. We don't want that because typically Windows update tends to download out of date drivers. And that kind of defeats the purpose of this whole entire program. So first, I'm going to show you guys how to disable that feature. Then I'm going to show you guys how to boot in a safe mode. Now, this is pretty straightforward to do. First thing you want to do is you want to hit the Windows key and type in Control Panel, or you can just go to the Control Panel, whatever is easier for you. Now, personally, I like to set it to large icons when you look at the View By section here. If you select Category, it's going to give you this view here. I like to choose large icons. You're going to go to the System section. But if you're on Category, it's simply under System and Security, and then you'll see the System tab, tab here. It'll bring you to the same window. Now, you'll be at this little section here. It'll tell you some of your system information. You're going to want to click Advanced System Settings on the left-hand side. Then from here, you'll, have, you'll be presented with a number of tabs. You're going to want to click the Hardware tab. And then where you see Device Installation Settings, you want to click that button that's right there. Now, you're going to be asked, do you want to automatically download manufacturer's apps and custom icons available for your devices? You're going to want to select No and Save the Changes. This will help ensure that you don't automatically download any drivers from Windows updates whenever you have a missing driver for a particular component. Next, we're going to want to make the system boot in the safe mode, which is something that you used to be able to do upon boot up. I don't know if you can even do it now with Windows 10, but if you want to do that from Windows 10, you can simply do it from the desktop. From here, you just want to go ahead and push the Windows key and start typing in MS config. And you'll see you'll get the system configuration app as as a result. Now, from here, you want to head to the boot tab. And all you have to do to go into safe mode is click the safe boot option and make sure minimal is selected. From there, you can go ahead and you can click apply. Then you click OK. It'll ask you to restart. In this case, because I'm using OBS to record, I'm going to choose exit without restart so I can, you know, stop the recording. But after that, all you have to do is restart the system. So in your case, you can just click restart and it'll automatically restart for you. All right, I'm going to restart the system and get the camera set up and we'll continue this tutorial. I apologize ahead of time if the audio is a little odd. I don't have the camera pointed at, I don't have the microphone pointed at me, so the audio might be a little strange, but we'll just go ahead and get through this. So from here on the desktop, I'm just going to go ahead and restart. It's going to tell me that I need to update, so whatever, I'll just run the system update and restart. Now, for those of you who have never booted into safe mode before, like, yes, the resolution looks super upscaled. Like, you'll notice that I'm not even connected to the internet. That's the whole point. What safe mode does is that it boots up the system without any startup programs whatsoever. So it's basically just a bare bones version of the operating system. And this is just a good way to not only help diagnose if you have any issues potentially with a startup program, but it's also a good way to kind of safely run programs like this, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in my credentials and of course everything's going to look all messed up you can see that it says like safe mode in the corner windows r windows r build whatever from here you just want to go ahead and just find your ddu wherever you installed it in my case i have it installed here and all you have to do is you just open up this and then you'll be presented with this screen here now there's a few options and on top of that it'll have it'll give you options to for example update display drivers you can do that if you'd like to i personally recommend that you download the driver that you need and do it manually but first you're going to want to specify the device type in this case we are uninstalling a gpu driver and depending on what you have in nvidia amd intel uh, in our case, it's NVIDIA, so we're going to choose NVIDIA. Simply, all you need to do here is click Clean and Restart. You can choose these other options, but this could be risky depending on what kind of device you have. Like if your CPU doesn't have a graphics driver inside of it itself, that might be a bit of an issue. But in this case, we're going to choose Clean and Restart, and it'll restart the system afterwards. Let the program do its thing, and then it'll restart the system automatically. Now, we'll be brought back to the login screen, and you'll probably notice that it appears like we still had that really, you know, uh, low resolution look to the PC. That's because uh, the graphics driver was completely uninstalled, and now the graphics card is running almost strictly on basic firmware. We need to reinstall the driver in order to run at our native resolution. As you can see down in the lower right hand corner, we are on the internet. Therefore, um, we are not in safe mode. Now, as far as how I'm going to demonstrate how you should probably reinstall your graphics driver, I'm going to go and find my download folder. And then we see that we have the latest driver right here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to wait for some of our startup programs to start up. I have a few startup programs, so it, take, it takes a little bit of time. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to click our driver. We're going to run that installer. 
Click yes. Wherever it wants to install it, let it install it. You can choose where you want to put it. This part is normal. Normally you'll see the, the resolution return to normal right afterwards in the middle of this process right here. Now you've probably noticed that some sound came from the PC. That's because my monitor has speakers. Uh, one thing that NVIDIA drivers tend to do when you do a clean install is that they automatically default to the monitor as its sound card. So keep that in mind if you start to run into an issue where maybe you're hearing sound coming out of your monitor or you're not hearing sound at all. Just check to make sure that your sound driver is, is the correct one before you assume that maybe something got messed up in the process. Admittedly, it took me a few tries to get to this point. You might r potentially run into an issue where it says that the installation failed, in which case just rerun the installer. I actually had to rerun it a couple of times. I don't know why, but it happened. You'll be prompted immediately if you're installing a video driver whether or not you want to install GeForce Experience. This is up to you if you want to do this personally. I don't like GeForce Experience, so I don't install it. So I'm going to choose NVIDIA Graphics Driver. Agree and continue. And then from here, I'd like to choose Custom. This is because I get to have a little more control over what gets installed in my system. Now, typically, I used to have to, un I used to, have to choose not to install 3D drivers because I didn't have a 3D monitor. But they've removed that recently, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. In this case, as long as NVIDIA GeForce Experience is unselected, I'm totally fine. So in this case, I'm going to actually want to choose the perform a clean installation. This is the one thing that you're going to want to do when you do a fresh install. This just guarantees that it's installed properly and installed clean. So you're going to want to choose next and just run through the normal driver installation process. We're just going to let the driver install and then we'll come right back once it's all set. All right, the installer is complete. So one thing that I like to do regardless of whether or not it's essential is to close this out. And then I want to actually restart the system. So I'm going to go ahead and restart the system and then we'll come back onto the desktop once it's all set. Okay, so we're here back on the desktop. This is after the driver is finished installing. And at this point, you're all set. You have finished doing everything, but I do want to make a couple of quick notes about some things after the process is complete. Like I said, sometimes the driver will automatically default to a different sound driver, in which case you would just simply right click on your speaker icon, you'd go to sounds, and then you just want to check to your playback and recording devices to make sure your defaults are correct. Now in this case, like I'm totally okay. I can just go ahead and set everything to what I needed to set to, and I'll, I should be good to go. Mostly it's your playback drivers that get reset, especially if you install the sound driver that comes with NVIDIA. In my case, I use a dual streaming setup, so it makes sense for me to install that driver, but for most of you, you might never use it. So if you want to go ahead and not install that sound driver, you are welcome to do so. That could have been done in the custom install process that I showed you earlier. But there are some other things too that tend to get reset during this process. Because it is a clean install, unfortunately, a lot of your NVIDIA control panel settings get reset. So one thing I like to do first is that I'll open the video control panel and the first thing that I'll actually do is I'll go to change resolution and just make sure that I'm running at my native refresh rate and my native resolution. Next thing you might need to end up setting up if you have multiple monitors, you're probably going to want to make sure those are all working properly. That can be done here at this screen. I only have one monitor so I don't have to worry about it. If you have G-Sync or FreeSync uh, or should I say NVIDIA compatible FreeSync. This typically gets reset. Normally it's default. It defaults to enable for full screen mode, but for those who use borderless window or windowed mode and you want to use G-Sync, you have to make sure that you have this checked. So make sure you check this every time you do a clean install of your driver because this typically gets reset. And lastly, for some of you who like to leverage the NVIDIA control panel to get some extra performance out of your games, these settings get reset as well. So if you have some global settings, for example, I know a lot of people like to take the power management mode and set it to prefer maximum performance that will get reset so make sure that that is set as well and for some of you guys you know any one of these settings will get reset the default so if you use any of these settings for some of your games just go back check them and you'll probably have to go and set them back up again and lastly, for those that like might have a dual streaming setup like I do, uh, some of you might use the sound card that comes with the NVIDIA driver uh, to run your audio into your capture card, in which case you're going to want to go to set up digital audio and just double check to make sure that your sound card is enabled. And you might also need to go into your sound settings to make sure that that is available as well, because sometimes that does get uh, disabled. In my case, it seems to be okay. Everything looks good here. 
and you should be good to go after that. That's just about wraps up this tutorial, guys. I hope it helped you guys out, and if it did, please be sure to rate and comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of the video or if you needed any more additional information that I didn't include. Down in the description, there'll be links to my social media pages along with a link to my Twitch page where I stream twice a week. You guys can converse with me live there if you'd like to. And also, there'll be a link to the Hobbyist PCs community Discord. You guys can hop into that Discord and get to know the wonderful people in my community. And they're definitely very helpful people. So if you need some additional help, great place to go and ask for it. Also in the description, there'll be links to the merch page where you can purchase some merch to try to help out the channel if you like what you see. And if you'd like to stay up to date with everything going on at Hobbyist PCs, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications, and you'll be notified anytime that we update to the channel. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I hope you guys have a pleasant day. Have a good one, everyone.